Storytime friends and welcome to another episode of Crossroads Silk Road Storytime. If you've tuned in before then recently you might have travelled with us to Ghana and to Haiti. This time we're taking you to Colombia. If you've tuned in before you might also know that we've got a craft coming up in this episode and if you'd like to get ready for your craft now then please feel free to do so. The things that you're going to need today are a toilet roll, a pair of scissors, a black marker pen and a few other colours of your choice and finally something that will be sticky. I've chosen some blue tack today but you might like to choose some glue. If you've got all of those things ready we're going to continue by finding Columbia on our Silk Road Storytime world map. Today we're particularly interested in this continent here which is the continent of South America. Colombia on our world map is a blue country. Can you spot it? That's right, it's right here. So we're now experts on where Colombia is on a world map and we've seen some pictures of what life is like in Colombia. Now it's time to tune in and find out a little bit more about the main person in our story today who is a man called Luis. Luis lives in Colombia and Luis loves books. That's one of the reasons why I'm surrounded by books right now. We'll talk a bit more about them later on. The other thing that Luis loves are donkeys and donkeys play a big part in our story today and because in Colombia they speak Spanish I'd like to teach you one word before we get started. That word is the word burro. Listen to my rolling R. Burro. That means donkey and you're going to hear that word in our story. Our story today is a story called Biblio Burro. There's that R again. It's written by a person called Jeanette Winter and it's actually about a real person. Again, we'll find out a bit more about him later on. Before we get started with our reading, we're going to want to find our story time bottoms. So let's find that now and snuggle it down onto the ground, ready for good sitting and listening. Next, we're going to want to find our story time ears. So let's click them on. Click, click. And finally, our story time eyes. Here are mine. Let's attach them, shakum, shakum. And everyone was nice and quiet. Biblio Burro, a true story from Colombia. Deep in the jungles of Colombia, there lives a man who loves books. His name is Luis. As soon as he reads one book, he brings home another. Soon, the house is filled with books. His wife, Diana, grumbles. What are we going to do? Eat books with our rice? Luis thinks long and hard. At last, an idea pops into his head. I can bring my books into the faraway hills to share with those who have none. One burro could carry books, and another burro could carry me, and more books. Luis buys two sturdy little burros. He names them Alpha and Beto. He builds crates to hang on their backs and paints signs, Biblio Burro, the burro library. Then Diana fills the crates with books. Every week, Luis and Alpha and Beto set off across the countryside to faraway villages in the lonely hills. This week, they travel to El Tormento, when the sun burns high in the sky, Luis and the burro stop at a stream to drink the cool water. After they have their fill, Beto bulks. Luis pulls and pulls on Beto's reins, but Beto won't budge. The children are waiting for us. At last, the burro gives in and steps across the stream. Deep in the hills, the path is lonelier than ever. Bird songs are the only sounds they hear. Then, from deep in the shadows, a bandit leaps out. Please let us pass, Luis says. The children are waiting. The bandit scowls at the books, but he takes one and growls, Next time I want silver. 
The Biblio Burro continues on its way over the hills until at last Luis sees houses below. The children of El Tormento run to meet him. Luis insists on reading a story before they choose books to borrow. Today I have a surprise for you, he says. He reaches behind the books and pulls out a bundle of masks, little piglets. Put on a mask and I'll read you a tale about pigs. Once upon a time, and then we've got the rest of the story here in pictures. I bet you know it. When the story ends, it's time for everyone to choose a book. The children hold their books close as they say goodbye and walk home. Luis and Alpha and Beto head back over and around the hills, across the grasslands and streams and into the sunset. At home, Luis feeds his hungry burros and Diana feeds her hungry husband. But then, instead of sleeping, Luis picks up his book and reads deep into the night. And far away in the hills, candles and lanterns burn as the children read borrowed books deep into their night too. And that's the end. What a great story, hey, about Luis and his burros and his books and how he traveled the countryside with them. We're going to talk a bit more about Luis and the work that he does and also how books can really change people's lives after our craft time. But for now, it's time to do some crafting. Are you ready? In our craft time today, we're going to be making our own little donkey. He's going to look a little bit like this. You can decide the color, but first I'll show you how to make him. As I mentioned earlier, you needed a loo roll to do this craft. And the first step in making a burro, a donkey, is to cut your loo roll into two parts. I've already done that and I've got my two parts ready here. One part is going to become his body and the other part is going to become his head. So to make his body, what you want to do is cut out his four legs. I've actually marked up my loo roll here so that I can make sure I'm cutting four legs because the first time I did it, I accidentally only cut three and donkeys definitely need four legs to walk. The other bit of the loo roll is going to become your donkey's head. So again, what I've done with a pencil or with a marker is I've cut out the donkey's head here. Oh, sorry, I've marked it out, I should say, and then I cut it out. So that's the bit that's going to be attached to the second bit over here. Once you've got those things cut out, they're going to look a little bit like this and like this. Now, before you put them together, it's definitely easiest to color them at this point. So if you want to give your burro a nice color, you'd be very welcome to do so. I've chosen gray for the body and I've given his hoofs here a little bit of black. On his face, I've marked out his snout here and I've marked out two eyes with my black marker. If you've done those two things, it's time to put the two pieces together. I've got my little bit of blue tack here and I'm going to stick it on the back of the head like that and then I'm going to attach it to my burro's body over here like this. And that gives me this finished little donkey. It's pretty cute, hey? You don't need to stop at making one. Why not make two? Just like the two donkeys that we saw in the story today. All right, friends, we've listened to our story and we've done our craft. Now it's time to think a little bit more about Luis and what he was doing with his books in Colombia. The great thing about Luis, I think, is that he realized that not everyone had as many books as he had, or even any books at all, and he wanted to make sure he was sharing his books with others. At the end of this video, you might like to think about how you can share your books with others as well, because I'm sure there are people even in your community that don't have as many books as you do, or don't even have any books at all. So you might like to find ways of sharing your books. It could just be with a neighbor or with a friend, but you might also like to find other organizations working in your community that can help you to share your books. If you live in Hong Kong, you might be interested that Crossroads Foundation has been sharing books with children all around the world for over 20 years. Actually, right now I'm sitting in the book department at Crossroads. That's why I'm surrounded by these boxes and buy these books. And if you live in Hong Kong and if you'd like to share your books here, 
you might like to connect with Crossroads so that we can help you to share your books with children around the world that don't have any at all. I think that's all for now, friends. Thank you so much for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.